If uh, you would, let me have your attention. The uh, regular Board of County Commissioner meeting for June the 5th, I'd like to call to order. Would like to welcome the many that are here tonight. Good crowd. Uh, invite you to come back each and every meeting. These are open to the public, and thank you for being here. At this time, I would like to uh, ask Vice Chairman Burleson to give us invocation, Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you will, bow with me. Lord, we come to you tonight uh, with many thanks for the recent rain that we have had. Uh, come to you, too, to ask that you uh, lead us uh, tonight as we go through this meeting and over the next few weeks and uh, help us make the right decisions for our county, Lord. Uh, be with those in attendance tonight, Lord. Be with all the firefighters and personnel that we have here tonight. Be with all our uniformed law enforcement across the county, state, and nation. Be with all our military men and women serving across across seas. We ask this name. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Will stand with me for the pledge. If everyone has the agenda in front of them, uh, would like to ask for a motion to approve or adjust the agenda. Chairman, I make a motion to accept the agenda as presented. Second. We have a first and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Uh -huh. <clears throat> motion carries. Under uh, tonight's uh, meeting, the very first thing is to me very important and to the individual that's being recognized is this is very important to him. So at this time I would like to ask our airport manager David Griffin and our airport authority chair Mike Harwood to please come forward. David I bet you thought you'd never see this day. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for having us. And uh, I prepared a little synopsis here about David, and you can just I hope it's accurate. I'll try my best. But, um, you know, um, we all are thankful for David's years of, of service to the airport. And, and uh, I'm just going to try to read this to you as I, I tried my best to prepare something that was appropriate. David Myers Griffin began his career in local government with the Mecklenburg County Environmental Health Department in early 1973. And I put in red here, I was nine years old then, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in 1977, David was recruited and hired by the Stanley County Health Department where he spent the next four years. In 1981, Anson County Health Department lured David south of the border where he worked until 1984. It was in 1984 that he was preparing to go even further south to the state of Florida, and he got a call from Carlton Buddy Holt, who at the time was the chairman of our airport authority, and uh, Buddy talked David into submitting a resume for the airport director position that was open at the airport. I put also in red here what a difference one phone call made to our airport and to Stanley County. For the past three decades, David has led the migration of the Stanley County Airport from a single runway facility to now being recognized as one of the best general aviation facilities in the state and likely the nation, and I think you'll all agree to that. The airport now sports parallel runways, a full instrument landing system which has brought me home many times in bad weather, a uh, control tower and a local radar. David's relationship with the North Carolina Air National Guard has resulted in numerous improvements to the airport with very little cost to the county of Stanley and the state of North Carolina. We certainly would not have the airport we have today had it not been for David's tireless work and vision. I can safely say that my 30 years uh, friendship with David 
and my love for aviation has been instrumental because of him. He was very, very instrumental in all that to me. Uh, 1987 is when I first learned to fly at our local airport and uh, been a pilot ever since. We've had many good times together, uh, flying buddy hold around over the years. I remember one particular trip we went to Lafayette, Louisiana. Buddy got a hold of some pretty strong jambalaya as soon as we got there, out in the middle of nowhere, and he and I spent the next few hours chasing down sweet acidophilus ice cream to get Buddy's fire put out. <laughs> Never forget it. Good times, good yes, times. David is married to Tammy Barbie Griffin, and they have three children and four grandchildren, Tammy and daughters Brooke and Jennifer and granddaughter Ashlyn are here with us tonight, as well as our airport personnel and a couple of our board members, and uh, we really appreciate them coming to support David. Um, in retirement, David's going to catch up on Tammy's to-do to list and spend some time with family in here and in Alaska, right, Brooke? Okay. With that said, please join me as chairman of the Stanley County Airport Authority in congratulating David for his years of service to our airport. Can I say a couple of things? Sure you can. I knew you would have one or two words. <laughs> Well, it, it goes back to um, the phone call I got from Buddy Holt uh, all those years ago. And I'll clean this up. But when Buddy called me to ask me if I knew there was a vacancy at the airport, I told him, yes, I did. I knew there was one. And uh, he said, would you be interested in it? And I, in so many words, told him that I didn't know a thing about running an airport. That's the clean version. And Buddy's response was, and his clean version was, you didn't know a dang thing about public health when we brought you here <laughs> from Mecklenburg County, and we feel like we can do the same thing in teaching you about running an airport. And that was 32 and a half years ago. There were times I thought I'd jump from the frying pan right into the fire. It was not always easy, but it was a good job, and we accomplished a lot. I couldn't have done it I couldn't have done it without you were ill. my board and my family. And it's not easy to walk away from 32 years of something that's difficult. But I think I've earned it. And I'm ready to take the next chapter in my life. And thank you all, all of you for your encouragement and your support over the years. I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you very much. David, if you would stay there. citizens of Stanley County on this occasion of your retirement. 
we extend our sincere appreciation for your service and wish you even greater achievements and rewards in the future. Presented to you this fifth day of June 2017 by the Stanley County Board of Commissioners. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all would join a get around between me and come here, Dave. Right here. I hopefully we got somebody with a camera. We got anybody with a camera? Okay. We want a picture. Yeah, we want pictures made of uh, David Griffin, our Air Force manager. And I had the opportunity of serving on his authority for I don't know four or five years. Really enjoyed it. We've got a fantastic Air Force because of fantastic people that are associated with our Air Force and from David throughout the staff that he has. So thank you. So everybody smile. <laughs> Family up here. We don't do that. No, we're done. <laughs> yeah, we'd like to get the family. We want our airport associates and family and <coughs> airport authority members to come up. Come on, baby. Who's camera? Check, make sure I got that picture. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank Mr. you, Mike. Good night. Thank you, David. Thank you. <clears throat> Enjoy your retirement. I can assure you, it is fun. <laughs> I'm going to come get some pointers. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm having a good time. I know you will also. Thank Mr. You. Chairman, can I say one thing? Yes, sir, Ashley. This is for David out there. I've known David since 2005. We're going to miss him at the airport. I'm on the airport authority right now, but uh, I've known him. He gave me my first shot. I was fresh out of college, um, wanted to flight and strut. And the first thing he says, make sure you got insurance, let it everything. And uh, I've known him since, like I said, 05. I've trained a lot of kids out there, uh, not just kids, but <laughs> I'd like to say just thank you for giving me the opportunity back in 05. And uh, you'll be missed out there. Hope to see you around still. Thank you, Ashley. <clears throat> At this time, uh, I want to open up a public hearing for the physical year 2017-18 recommended budget. This is in accordance with the North Carolina General Statute 159-12B that we hold a public hearing regarding the recommended 17-18 budget uh, prior to it being a budget being adopted. So at this time, uh, <clears throat> I do open the public hearing. Is there, there's a couple people that have signed up for uh, public comments for the budget. And Tammy Schrecker, the DSS director, I'm going to call on her first. If you would, Tammy. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Point of uh, privilege while she's coming up. Uh, Ms. Schrecker was named DSS director of the year by this. State DSS Directors Association. I sit on that board and I thought she should be recognized for that. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Mm -hmm. And good evening, and I'll be brief. Um, just wanted to bring out a couple of points about the recommended budget for 17-18. Um, um, we know it's very difficult, and there's a limited amount of funds, and we certainly understand this. And I know Mr. Lucas has worked really hard to try to meet our needs over the last three years that I've been in Stanley County and continues to try to do so. Um, we did receive in his recommended budget much of the most all really all of the technology that we requested as well as a vehicle um, but the one thing that we did not receive that we're very concerned about is first additional staff and second gap time pay to help our employees work over when they need to now traditionally gap time has not been a problem because we have had many vacancies at the Department of Social Services if you look at the trend for quite a few years we've been in double digits. Um, I'm proud to announce that we were 7% this year in turnover rate and right now we have one vacancy. Um, and as great as that is, we hope to have that vacancy filled by the time we start this budget, July 1st, that allows us no lap salaries if any of our employees need to work overtime to issue benefits. Um, and that's very concerning for us. We have a system, I'm sure many of you have heard of NCFAST, that doesn't always cooperate and there are times that we do get behind. Um, and although our quantity has been good the past year, um, we have done that through working overtime. Um, I'm a little concerned about our quality because when we push our workers so hard to get the numbers um, of the benefits and get them issued, sometimes we do he hurry through that process. Um, so we are concerned that we have no cushion going in to the new budget year and so we do request that we be allowed to have some gap money in our budget. The good thing about gap money is we estimate that we will be reimbursed at about 45 percent through federal funds for those workers working overtime. Um, we have received over the past couple of years um, eight and a half staff in the Department of Social Services and we're very, very pleased with that. However, we still lag behind when you compare ourselves with counties, similar population along with similar proper, um, poverty rates. Um, so we have requested that we be able to add some staff positions and we know we're not the only department that has requested that. Um, but our main concern is just making sure that we have money available that workers can perform overtime duties if needed um, to issue those benefits. So are there any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations on that. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time, I have uh, not a name, but it says representative of Ridgecrest Volunteer Fire Department. Good evening. Um, this is uh, Deputy Chief Charlie Carricker. I'm Chief Rick Udy. Um, we have presented information for a tax increase for our fire district. Um, with some information um, that we had turned in on what we proposed to do long term, uh, not just short term. Um, tonight we came, if you have questions, we will try our best to answer those. Any questions from the board? I do, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what, what do you anticipate the additional revenue, what do you anticipate using that for? <coughs> Uh, initially, uh, Commissioner Burleson, the revenue will be used to replace a tanker. Uh, we currently have a 2,000 gallon tanker that is getting up in age as well as uh, repair and maintenance cost. So initially we will be using that uh, to fund a 10 year loan for a brand new tanker. Uh, we have specs in hand. We have not uh, pulled the trigger to order that yet pending uh, final approval of the budget, but that's our initial uh, usage of the, the funds. So that's replacing an existing tanker that is going to take that's out of correct. service? Yes, sir. But there is also in the proposal uh, in the 10-year plan 
the money's not going to be just for that. When that's over, there's things to come. Um, we currently supplement the, the twelve thousand dollars staffing grant that the the commissioners give us. We currently supplement that to add a fourth day of staffing. Uh, the the money that you give us provides adequate funding for three days. We're going to add, we've already added a fourth day, and in our proposal, twenty twenty, we're adding a fifth day. Uh, the daytime hours are the most difficult time for us to have adequate staffing and provide adequate response uh, to the citizens. So we use that money to uh, put one person on. That's enough to get us a, an initial response engine, whether that's in district or out of district. And then we still have, uh, Chief Udi operates a, um, a repair garage in the district. I personally work at home. We try to supplement that staffing when we can uh, to, to meet the needs of the residents. The staffing that you have Monday through Friday, is that? Yes, sir. Currently, we work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that was really just a, a wild guess on where, where we could use it. But also, uh, the gentleman uh, that I use for my part-time staffing, uh, most of them do have uh, professional full-time firefighting careers. So they work one day on, two days off. So however their schedules fall out, uh, that's when I add our staffing. Those people are also trained in rescue. We run light rescue, or medium rescue. Medium sorry. rescue. Um, and all the people on our staff in daily are certified fire and rescue and EMS, so uh, to serve the highest quality that we can, so. That's all the questions I've got. Appreciate what you guys do. Thank you. Well, thank you for Chief. staffing. It, it helps us tremendously. Um, and anything else that we can do for you, let us know. Chief, would you quickly address, um, just for the sake of the other commissioners, I, I think I read something in y'all's proposal about potentially addressing your insurance rating further down the road in that 10-year plan? That's correct. Um, I know y'all have addressed it partially. Y'all are a split district, but... Uh, several years ago, well, we're a, we're a flat seven. We're a straight seven. Whether you're within a thousand feet yeah. of a hydrant or not, we are a seven district. So that, with this tanker, should with some more work, which I think would be fairly easy. Yeah. Uh, we should be able to drop at least another number. We should be able to go to a six, which a six is basically as much help as you can give to a homeowner. Um, we don't have a whole lot of industry, so um, it, it'd be nice to go lower than a six, but for 99% of our district, that would be the most help we could give them as far as an ISO rating. But I think that would put us where we need to be. From a from a seven to a six, that's a big deal for a homeowner's insurance policy. It is. It's in the neighborhood of ten to fifteen percent of a homeowner's policy. Uh, we initially started at a nine, uh, and then a few years back we reduced from a nine to a straight seven. Uh, the difference in a, a straight district or a split district, as Commissioner Swain was speaking of. If it's a split district, then anyone that is within a thousand feet of a hydrant gets the lower number. Anyone with outside of that thousand feet gets the higher number. So as we went through the um, inspection with the state, we asked them to look at us as a straight district so that we were uh, helping everyone, not just those that were within the thousand feet of a hydrant. And since then, we've had more hydrants a lot more installed. Hydrants. Yes, um, I think I think this would put us into where we need to be without any doubt. Um, this size tanker also is, is in line with the people that surrounding our districts. We run mutual aid with everybody in our area and some in Cabarrus County. Um, in ISO rating, dumping and filling is a big issue. Um, and if they dump at the same rate, fill at the same rate, it makes the system work out, the time work out better for the ISO rating. So. It's not only for our district, it's for everybody's district. Any other questions? Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Those are the only uh, citizens that signed up to speak during the public hearing. 
but looking at public comments, uh, there may be some people to speak at this time instead of at public comment. So if they are, I believe Ron, you standing up, would you like to come up? I think I was looking at the wrong sheets when I signed up, I guess. I don't know whether it was. And too many sheets out there. Too many sheets out there, what have you, what have you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, County Manager, my name is Ron Crawley, and uh, I, I had the opportunity, and I appreciate the comments and phone exchanges I had with all the commissioners and the County Manager on this subject. But uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm here to speak. I was going to get somebody else to do it, but they all pushed me up here, so good. Would you guys that are here with me tonight stand up, please? Okay, thank you very much. These are, uh, we're, talk, we're here to discuss the West Stanley Community Center Foundation request for funding in a senior center satellite. Uh, and these are people that, uh, that just said, I, I, hey, I want to be there. I want to be there. I got three points to make. Uh, I won't drag it out very long. Point one is that in 2016, as I had the pleasure of being in the planning conference back here in the uh, county manager's conference room, and we discussed this $25,000 uh, grant for the community center, to potential community center in Locust. And if you recall, it was at first approved. I, I'm sorry, was disproved and uh, declined. And then someone suggested, hey, maybe we could live with a one-time $25,000 grant to support them. And it flipped the other way and it passed. And we said, okay, I said, well, one time I can live with that. Uh, I was still not pleased with it, but I could live with it. Well, here we are again. Except this time, it's a $25,000 request plus you guys taking over and developing it as a satellite with our senior center. And so, and, and, and just let me, let me quote this so we make sure we're all on the same page. By funding and operating the facility as a satellite of the existing senior center in Albemarle and taking over responsibility for the facility. Now that was the email that came from the foundation to the county manager, and I, I'm assuming all of you received that. It further stated that the monthly revenue to sustain operation is $2,037. That's $24,440 for the year, which is rent, utilities, phone, internet, and cable. Quote, there is no way to meet the demands without your assistance. So in essence, the way I read that is, if we don't get 25,000 again this year, we got to close the door because we haven't raised any money to help offset the expenses that potentially we're going to have. And I know you all, especially those that are in business and what have you know, <laughs> you have to prepare for the future. And if you're going to open some doors and do something, you've got to do something to raise some money. And uh, this one-time approval has now drawn another request by both uh, financial support and taken over operations for the county and it's based on your own one-time commitment. Uh, I, feel, I feel you should stick to your word bl very bluntly. You said one time. It was very well discussed at that time. And I think everyone realized that, okay, we'll help you out one time, but don't come back again, please. Basically, what I, I read into it. Now, that leads me to my second point, and that's the involvement in private nonprofit uh, non-profit uh, ventures. It's my understanding that the Board of Commissioners has a long-standing agreement not to get involved in private non-profit ventures. This one-time support of the West Stanley Community Center Foundation seems to be counter to this agreement. I can imagine that there are many others who would like to support in a like manner. This is a slippery slope, guys. If you're going to get into private, non-private, uh, uh, profit ventures, I, I think that's just too slippery. And I would caution us for not getting involved in that. My third point is this. This is my recommendation. 
Until such time that broad and extensive research is completed to see what the demand for senior services in the western part of Stanley County is, give the Stanley County Senior Center money to support SCUSA, transportation for the lo from, from the locust or western area of the senior center to the senior center. This will give you a better idea of whether a centralized satellite senior center is needed. This will give direct support to seniors who need or want the service. This can be accomplished with coordination between the Stanley County Senior Center uh, and Western municipalities, not just one, but all of the municipalities that may have people, they, they determine that they'd like to be involved here too, but they can't get here. And I would encourage us to do that. In conclusion, I conclude with this. I support local community centers and senior center facilities. Do not doubt me on that because I, I try to raise a lot of money. I work diligently trying to help out as much as I possibly can. If a community needs a community center, then that community should be responsible for starting and completing the appropriate private nonprofit program to raise funds to build and operate a facility. If an entity such as a board of commissioners or a town council determines a broader need for seniors, then they should undertake appropriate research to develop and operate a central facility to meet the need. Please do not honor this request. Let's do some research. Let's do some things and find out whether there's a need to be an expansion for our existing senior center pro uh, program. And if it is, then you'll know, and you'll know in the future years whether the, you need to be allocating funding or uh, some, kind of uh, some kind of facility for it. Anybody have a question? Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Crow. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. I'm going to just look at the public comment <coughs> list. And if you want to speak during this time about the budget, uh, please come up. If you don't, I'll contact you at the very end of the meeting to do public comments. Kelly. Dombrowski, who is the principal of Oakboro Choice STEM School. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Very well. Chairman and Commissioner, thank you for having me here this evening. Um, I wanted to just come and, one, introduce myself. My name is Kelly Dombrowski, and as of May 2nd, I was named uh, to serve as the principal at Oakboro Choice STEM School. Uh, this will be the county's first STEM school, and it has been met with great excitement. Uh, one of the things that I've been most excited about is to watch our numbers grow and I wanted to share with you some of that information. I know that um, discussion of budgets has been a, a big piece and so I felt like it was important to give you the latest update since that May 2nd naming. Um, as of right now uh, we have had approximately 330 students to express an interest to enroll in the fall. Um, that is a makeup from kindergarten all the way up to the eighth grade um, who have expressed their intent to participate in our enrollment night that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Of that though that I find most exciting uh, roughly 40 of them are students that are coming back into the district, either from a homeschool setting, from a charter school setting, or another uh, county, and maybe the family is moving back in. Um, and as you know, that has a, a, a lot of potential to bring in a good bit of uh, money that we have looked for with our um, school system to enhance the education of our children. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet with many uh, community leaders already, many educators both inside and outside of the county to share their ideas for a STEM school and um, ways to make it most uh, beneficial for our students but also for the families involved. Um, and getting back to the families involved, uh, one of the other nice pieces to share is that we have a representative or those who have expressed an interest to come from every school in the county that would be your elementary and middle school. Um, so it's really a nice representation of our county and their excitement for something different um, in our public school system. Uh, also, we've held uh, four information sessions. We help plan to hold the last one on Thursday. And we will then go into the enrollment sessions, much like a kindergarten night where students and families are able to come and actually meet with uh, myself and fill out the paperwork and commit to enrolling their child. Um, 
I've shared this information with you. I hope to be able to work with you ongoing throughout the school year. I think it's very important to have that, and I think it's very important that you know who I am and what my vision is um, for our school in lines with our uh, school system. And I uh, do look forward to working with you because, as it's already been said, we are working to educate our children for the future. Um, and I thank you for this time. Any questions, Kelly? I do have one. Yes. You were talking about potential number of enrolled students. Mm -hmm. When will enrollment night take place? I hope to have it in uh, next week. We'll solidify a date and put that out um, where they can actually come and sit down and physically fill out the paperwork with us and our social worker as well as our assistant who will be on staff. So you should know at that time how many students are yes. actually coming. Mm -hmm. okay. The ones, I, I do have this question, the ones that are private school or home school now, um, what, what do you think drew their interest back to enroll? That's a great question, and one that has been asked through our information sessions. Um, many of them have expressed the opportunity to have this different style of learning. Um, STEM, as you know, um, is focused on science, technology, engineering, and math. That does not mean that the student has to be a strong math student or a science student, but rather it encourages the way that we're going to go about looking at problems, looking at analyzing how to get from point A to point B, and not just whether or not we get the correct answer. Um, and to enhance that style of learning, many of the families have said, you know, I think that's a wonderful thing. I think it's an exciting prospect to teach our children how to work together, um, how to be um, those folks that will be wanted by employers. And when you look at individuals, you want team players, you want people who can look at things rather than just what the right answer is and be able to explain to you the process. Um, I've had the opportunity to be in classrooms already and observe and talk with students working on robotics and making the actual robotic Lego car and be able to explain to me exactly the coordinates that they needed, how they figured that out, and watch them go through the, the trial and error and stick with it, that perseverance, that persistence that they are both vested in, but then they want to do it just because they've learned not to give up. They've learned that there is more to the lesson than just whether or not they get the correct answer. Um, and so that is very exciting. And other families have seen that and said, yes, I want that for my child. Um, and I think what a wonderful opportunity we have to be that first one, that first school that will set the tone that eventually will take it to all the schools here in Stanley County. Uh, we have an opportunity to have an individual come in and teach our teachers and work with us throughout the school year so that this is not just a one-time thing and are able to then educate others and we be that you know site school. Uh, very exciting times but very excited to be able to answer to these families that are saying yes I would like something different. Any other questions? Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. I enjoy. Look forward to working with you. Charlie Carricker, Ridgecrest Fire Department. Is this uh, you'd like to speak? We've already spoken. Okay. So we're on the wrong list. That's okay. Hey, <laughs> you signed for both. So that's good. I wanted to make sure we were heard. Okay. Uh, Phil Burris, Millinport, Volunteer Fire Department. My name is Phil Burris. I'm with Millport Fire Department. I'm chief. Uh, we also asked for a tax increase this year. Millport been very fortunate that we hadn't had to have a tax increase in a long time since the early 90s. But due to cost of everything going up, and we're also trying to lower ISO and do a lot of things, we're going to have to go for a tax increase just because we don't have the funds we need to uh, make it successful. We're also, in the next five years, going to have to buy three pieces of equipment, which will be right at a million dollars. Uh, that will help lower ISO and uh, put us back where we need to be at as far as having all new equipment. Uh, if I answer any questions, I'll be glad to. Any questions of Chief Burris? Thank you. Chris. Thank you. Robert Wilhoyt and Chad Allen. Come at the same time, both of you. Two at one time. Absolutely. Double trouble. 
Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. We also signed the wrong sheet of paper. Um, what we come for tonight, Chairman, Board members, is we sent a proposal in to up our budget from 10000 um, to 48000 with the $12,000 staffing as all the other fire departments get. We currently don't have any daytime staffing. And what we'd like to do with this money is supplement by this money with staffing and the extra to up our budget. Currently, we only get $10,000 a year staffing. That pays our insurance. We do get some supplemental money from the city. That helps pay utilities. And with this other money, we would help. We want to add, instead of the one person, that 12000 we'd like to add two. So we'd have two people during the day that this truck could help supplement all the other fire departments in this county with manpower. Then we'd have all the tools that could be used on a fire scene. And we will be hiring um, firemen. The idea is to hire firemen from the local fire department. So when you're actually getting those two people, you're not just getting a rescue tech from Stanley Rescue. Hopefully, I can't guarantee you who shows up for a position like that, but hopefully the local volunteer firemen will show up. You're actually getting two firemen on those trucks. So that will be anyone, say, if Eastside had a person sitting over there and they had a fire in their district, most times the fire departments know where their people are at. They could dispatch Rescue 71 up there and get one of their own members on scene. Plus another experienced fireman with them. <coughs> so now you know you got the ones coming from their staffing, plus two that's on our truck that would actually supplement the fire service. And if we're on their run cards and that the district's close enough, they'll be able to count our truck as a service truck that would also help lower their ISO rating. The, uh the rest of that has some of that has to do with I don't know if everybody has a copy of the email that I sent out if not I got a copy of it here but at the bottom of it it actually has a small budget on it some of that where it says personal practice equipment that's to get those daytime staffing fully equipped, equipped and, up, and up and running so mm -hmm. if we had those part-time part staffing without some of that we'd also have to start doing fundraisers and stuff trying to get them equipped which is usually what we have to do for that uh, and insurance it says 15. Of course, that goes up because of what they time staffing. You have a supplemental insurance policy. You got to pay more to insurance. help that if something would happen here, that of course be at, could possibility be out of work on their current job, and with the supplemental insurance would help supplement that salary that they could be losing. And then the like updating, maintaining the current equipment. Uh, some of our equipment is needing to be called so we can get it looked at. Uh, recently, we had our pumps looked at and uh, the hydraulic fluid for that is $110 a gallon. And it took 20 gallons to do it. So you're so still that's doing the math. $2,500 just in fluid, fluid, not counting what the guy actually charged to do it. I think the total bill is right around $6,000 just, just to service the hard, hydraulic equipment. Yeah. So that's the reason why you see what you see. Does anybody have any questions for us? Any questions? Uh, <clears throat> just one. What is your total budget for the year? Total budget last year with what we raised, it, it cost us about sixty some thousand dollars just to keep the doors open. That's just keeping it open. That's not anything extra. Uh, extra. No, and that's that. fundraisers, our major fundraisers, picture taking. That was my next question. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, my, I'll speak <clears throat> just I'm the fire commissioner uh, and I, I work with these guys day in and day out um, the service this would provide would would be greatly beneficial to other stations in the county especially for that daytime manpower I know that's what they're trying to address um, you know I know most stations that that I'm familiar with are, are spending anywhere from Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars on insurance, more than likely. So, you know that that's a big chunk of their their budget right there, going at the start. So, I, I would definitely support some form of an increase. Uh, and I know, like I told you guys on the phone, that we'll we'll bring it up and discuss it at one of the upcoming work sessions. But I would definitely support some form of an increase to help them out because it, it's not just a benefit to them; it's a benefit to every station. 
that can call on them in the daytime and get two more people on the scene of an accident or the scene of a fire uh, and, and address those issues. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak regarding the budget for 17-18? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. At this time, uh, the board, we need to set a few dates for budget workshops in advance of the adoption of our budget which hopefully will be done on June the 22nd, which is a Thursday. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to County Manager Lucas to work out some budget workshop dates. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I mean, really, that is going to defer back to you all to look at your calendars and uh, figure out uh, what dates you want to meet. We did set budget adoption for the 22nd. Certainly, we can do it sooner than that if you all get to that point. Um, but we're going to need to meet later in June anyways to do the year-end budget amendment. Um, and so uh, we tend to try to just push the budget adoption back to that meeting uh, so that you're not having to, you know, if you were to adopt the budget next week, you're still going to have to come back later in the month to have that meeting. Um, so I believe you can probably have two workshops and then a meeting set for a budget adoption and the um, year-end budget amendment. And, you know, obviously th other things come up and we may add those to it as well. But um, so I, I don't know your respective schedules in terms of who's got vacations and who's got evening meetings or other obligations. So I would, I would defer to you in terms of okay. which days work best. I'm going to throw a date out there uh, for the first workshop. And that would be uh, this Thursday, June the 8th, in the afternoon, preferably. 3, 3, 3, 3.30 time frame. How much later? 5 o'clock. I, I, Thursday's good with me. I'd like to see us maybe something around 4 o'clock. Uh, if possible, try to do it uh, during the day as much as possible so staff is already here um, I think that would help them out but I, I mean I can come most most anytime love for everybody to be there but sometimes that's not going to happen um, would are y'all okay with four o'clock Thursday I just I have a city council meeting I need to leave by 6 30 30 other than that I'll be fine I wouldn't. I got a rezoner request. The only reason I need to be there then, but I mean, I could leave her at six thirty. We split the difference at four thirty. Gene, can you do that? Probably. Probably. Okay. All right. Four thirty this coming Thursday, June the eighth, and I would imagine two hours max. I think, I think the experience in the past has been two hours is sort of the max. I mean, it's, uh, it's a lot to try to try to uh, absorb and uh, discuss. So, uh, and then we, you know, obviously there's some other things we have to do during that meeting. I know Donna usually comes and talks about utilities and we have some holiday things you have to take care of, fee schedule. Um, so, um, so I think two hours is a, about where we've cut it off in the past. Manager's conference room. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's one. Anybody have a recommendation for the next? The 15th. I agree with that. Oh, determine it on the 8th. Okay. Okay, that's fine. We'll do that. So uh, we will meet again on Thursday, June the 8th, 4.30. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay, item number three. 
is the Juvenile Crime Protection Council annual certification. Presenter is Jackie DeSantis. Jackie, welcome again. Thank you. Y'all used to seeing me every year I come up here, but again, I'm Jackie DeSantis. I've been a county employee for almost 10 years, so I know y'all are used to seeing me. Again, the federal and state government have agreed to give the uh, county $174,000 to divide however they see fit for programs to prevent and at, or to help at-risk youth and to hopefully prevent them from going into the juvenile justice system. We had an RFP published. And after the RFP was published, we held our annual meeting, our funding meeting, and the programs that you see on your list are the programs that we have agreed to fund. We've only added one new program. The reason we added that new program was because the West Stanley area felt like they weren't getting served through the YDI, or Youth Development Initiative, or REACH, is, uh, not REACH, or YDI, Lift Academy. But they're actually YDI now. So they were, they're serving mostly Albemarle, and that's mainly because of transportation issues. And the West Stanley area felt like they were underserved as it was difficult to get a student from West Stanley over all the way to Albemarle for those meetings when they meet in the evenings. So we, the board decided we'd look into that West Stanley program. And hopefully there'll be a successful program. It's tried. It would be operated by people from that area. And other than that, I think the programs are basically the same. We've, we've re-sponsored the REACH program. That's a program that's in the schools that the judges highly support. That program is to prevent dropouts in the future. I think that's an awesome program. And also, we have to actually uh, support the restitution program. That's basically what the funding is mainly mandated for, to support that restitution program, to provide punishment and restitution to victims in the community. Also attached to the $174,000 budget and how it's divided up is the JCPC $1,000 budget funds. Has to get people to your meetings. If you feed them, they'll come. So we try to keep our budget very low there. So that's only the $1,000. And that's kind of what you all approve of, as, as well as the programs. And then the list of folks that are on the board for next year are also provided. And we're going to try to fill those slots. It's difficult sometimes to get people to come to board meetings in the middle of the afternoon, but we'll try again to fill those slots. But I think we're pretty full as far as most of the positions are there, and we've got a steady group of people that usually come to the meetings. And you all had put some people on the board last year, and a couple of those continue to come. And that's the normal thing. So that's, any questions? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I see we've got some uh, of our board has some appointees on this and they're up for reappointment this year, correct? Right, usually when, because of the way the list is laid out, we list those court of, those appointments, I'm sorry, going to court too much. We list those appointments as county commissioner appointees. Those people are people that really need to be on the board. My name is listed there because I've been the chair for so long and they won't let me out of it, but um, the other folks are Juvenile Crime Council, JCCs, and you really need them as voting members of your board, and there's no really slot for them up at the top, so they're added to the bottom. And then the other members, I believe, are the ones you all appointed last year that actually asked to be on the board, and I, I think Chris Fish and Miss um, Holt, maybe, is that? I'm trying to remember who was on there. There was one other one. Oh, Fredia um, Owens is on there, too, and you all actually chose them last year but that's generally why they're listed at the bottom you really need your jccs on your board and there's not a slot at the top to put them on there okay um my my concern is i, I don't have a uh, application on these folks i know recognize some of their names but mm -hmm. I, I don't have an application and i know it's kind of been a standing thing with this board to have applications for folks before we put them on a board so i would kindly ask uh the board to table this until maybe one of the budget meetings that we can get an application on these folks to review. Uh, I, I do that in the form of a motion. Who are you asking for? If I could ask, who are you asking for? Sorry. W from whom would you These like folks me? on here have already been appointed, correct? Yeah. yeah, they're already on the board. This is up for reappointment from my understanding. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. There, We don't have appointments for every. The, basically, it requires that I give you a list of them. 
And we, and according to the bylaws, the people that are on the board sit for at least two years, and if the board members decide to keep them on the board, they remain on the board. So those members are actually on the board. What you're basically <coughs> approving is that I gave you a list of the members and that the $1,000 basically for the budget, I think that's it, the $1,000 for the budget and that I gave you a list is what the county commissioners normally approve. All right. they, they, they had a volunteer, they had a volunteer application to be appointed last year or whenever they were appointed. Mm -hmm. So these are folks that are already on there and we don't usually take applications for reappointments if they've already had an application. I think that's the confusion. Well, and if we have new folks, then we would require a volunteer application. That's my understanding. I'm sorry. Well, I don't recall uh, approving this in the past. Um, so, uh, Vice Chairman uh, Barlison, we did approve it last year. I do remember. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it's possible. Uh, then we should have an application on file, I guess, if we did it last year. So. Uh, I don't see why we can't wait till maybe Thursday and have a chance to review those applications at least. We can get a copy of them if we've got them on file. So. Is this a one-year term or two-year? They're appointed every year? The board members are actually vote on whom they want on their board and then you all have the right to appoint folks. The members that actually applied to be on the board were those three that I mentioned. They actually sent in applications. The other folks, including myself, never have never applied or never have turned in an application because pretty much if you're working with youth, the people you need on your board are your juvenile court counselors and that's who those three are. And then myself, I'm a chair so I've always been, I've just always been on there. I guess I can move my name up. But did defense work for a while, so. Uh, just the com commissioner appointees would be the ones that would we would require a volunteer application. So those would be Certainly the ones. we wouldn't require one from the superintendent of schools and that kind of thing. So you want applications from the JCCs? Oh, I'm sorry, just the. Yeah, nineteen through twenty five. Correct. We don't need one from. Uh, well, that would be DeSantis. myself and the three JCCs, correct? Is that? No, we. No. So you're just looking at Chris Fish. Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll amend uh, my motion to state I would like to at least review an application uh, for the individuals from 19 to 24. Uh, I think that. You know, if these folks have been on here in the past, and, and I don't doubt that, then we should have an application on file for us to review. But uh, we have, for the most part, uh, typically reviewed an application from folks. Uh, uh, you know, I, I would like at least to have some sort of background before I uh, pledge my support. Well, the uh, you asked 19 through 24, but 25 is also a county commission point. The three. I, I understand that. I'm. Well, yes, the, I'm the last one. The other three you have on there, you've, they have applications on file. Freddie Owens, the uh, Mr. Fish, and is they, I guess it's Jessica, Jessica Holt. Holt. Now they they apply. They asked to be on the board, and you all appointed them last year. The other four, which would be John Michael Heyman, Philip Spate, Ashley Lowry, and myself, we've never applied. We've just always been on the board. They're all they they're there because of their position. So right. they don't need an application. Just like a uh, member of the faith community. Uh, just like the DSS director or their designee. They don't have a application, is my understanding. And I think we need to approve this uh, as presented. Uh, if we're not going to approve this list, we need to go ahead and approve everything else. Um, I, I would, Commissioner McIntyre, I would, I would agree with that, but uh, again, from my understanding, uh, you know, these folks are, I mean, it lists county commissioner appointee and I don't feel comfortable voting on something until I have all the information. Um, I have stated a motion and amended it. Um, I, I don't, I'm comfortable with doing it possibly Thursday. Uh, 
I'm not saying that I have a, a, an issue with any of these individuals. I would simply like to gather a little more information. Okay, Vice Chairman Burleson, give me your amended motion. The amended motion is to uh, uh, table the appointment of uh, members 20 through 24 uh, until a later date uh, so that we can get an application. And to clarify why I'm, why I'm not including 25 is Ms. DeSantis uh, is an employee here and I think that that has merit in itself. So you're not including number 19? Excuse me, uh, number 19, yes. And, and you must have a different list than I have because my list does not match up to your list. Where is it? You'll have to tell me who those folks are that you question so I can. The chairman's the last one to know. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> You'll tell me who those folks are that you're yeah. questioning, and I'll tell you. Yeah, let me look at this list. That'll be fine. All right. You're saying who? Okay. You said Frida Owens was. Freda Owens is one of your appointees. Okay. And Ashley Lowry? Yes, yeah, she's a juvenile court counselor. So she's appointed because of her? Title. Title. So 22 would be Jessica Hope. She's one of yours. Uh, Chris Fish is an appointee by county commission. Y'all, y'all, he, he he filed an application also. Yeah, and Philip Spade, he's appointed because he's a juvenile court counselor. So we really need 21, 22, 23. Just curious, just do those uh, three folks, 21 through 23, attend the attend meetings on a regular basis? Who would that be? Uh, Chris Fish, Jessica Holt, and Frida Owens. Pretty Owens actually is, has kind of has a conflict now because she went to work for one of the programs. So she actually works for one of the programs. However, she does abstain from voting. Jessica has attended maybe one meeting, maybe two. She's not a regular attender, but Mr. Fish is a regular attender and attends almost every meeting. And they're bi-monthly, but he does attend most meetings. After speaking with the chairman, I'll amend the motion again to only include 21, 22, and 23. Chris Fish, Jessica Holt, and Frida Owens. I'll second. All right, first and the second, any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, did, did we approve these folks in like November or December of last year? Yeah, about, about yeah. this time last year, wasn't it? I only come once a year usually. And, and these folks have yeah. already have a volunteer application in. So exactly. That's what I was voting. trying to get across. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a motion in the second. Let's vote on the motion in the second. Uh, all in favor of the amended motion of requesting a application for Chris Fish, Jessica Holt, and Frida Owens, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say aye. Motion fails. Do we have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to accept this uh, proposal as presented. I have a motion, Commissioner McIntyre, a second? Second. Okay, Commissioner Eford, any other discussion? I'm going to simply vote against this just because I don't have all the information I'd like to make an educated decision on it. I'm fine with the acceptance of $1,000, but I'm going to have to vote against the whole motion. We respect your vote. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I would like to amend Commissioner's, Commissioner McIntyre's motion to, if we've got people that are not attending meetings, I think we need to enforce our county policy. Um, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with the, the conversation about uh, having to have an application on file, uh, but if we've got people that aren't attending and aren't serving you in the capacity that that you need to be served, then I, I think we need to enforce our county policy. I'm okay with moving forward with this list, but I would like to amend his motion by adding, um, if it if this continues, then we need to enforce our county policy to replace members. I have a question. How many meetings a year do you have? How many meetings a year do you have? Six. They're six. bi-monthly. Usually so six, maybe seven if there's an extra meeting for the funding. There's a discussion on budget. 
what our policy says if they miss so many percentage or something. Yeah, there, there, we do. You, you do have an attendance policy, and usually it's uh, three um, or three consecutive or uh, meetings. Mr. Santos. Yes, ma'am. Do you keep attendance records? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Keep attendance records and minutes. Yes, ma'am. I will accept the amendment to the motion. Give me that amended motion one more time. We're having too many motions. <laughs> <laughs> I just made the motion that we accept the proposal as presented, amended, that we enforce our policy of attendance to meetings. From hence, going forward. From hence, this point going forward. forward. Yeah. Does that include the acceptance of $1,000 into the JCPC budget? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we have a amended motion, then a, who seconded? Okay, Commissioner Louder, any other discussion? Hearing none, let's vote. All in favor of this motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Here is six to one. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to call for about a 10 minute recess. Thank you. Okay, recess is over. I call this meeting back to order. Uh, the item number four is uh, presenter is Lori Ivey to talk with us about the approval of voluntary ag districts and also enhanced ag districts. Ms. Ivey. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, and staff. Thank you for allowing me to be here tonight. Um, I am here on the behalf of the Voluntary Ag District Board, um, who met on May 26, 2017, just a short time ago, and recommended the following forms for approval under Voluntary Ag District and Enhanced Voluntary Ag District. I am not going to read the application um, parcel numbers, acreage, and um, track numbers because there are a lot. You have all that in your packet and hopefully you've had time to review that. Um, but for Voluntary Ag District, Sunnybrook Farms has three applications. Robert Edward Hill, W. Eugene Smith, Andrew McSwain, Louie and Lynn Hunter, Buddy Hatley, and Terry Blaylock. And we have one application for Enhanced Voluntary Ag District and that's Brian and Nicole Henson. And the board, um, those come as recommendations from the board for your approval. Any questions of Ms. Ivey? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I move to accept all the voluntary and enhanced voluntary agricultural district applications as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Swine and a second by Vice Chair Burleson. Any other discussion? All in favor of uh, these new districts, or volunteer district and enhanced volunteer district, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Yes, ma'am. You have a good evening. Let's see, number five. <clears throat> it's a planning and zoning board of adjustment appointment. And I'm going to recognize our county manager, Andy Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, that board of adjustments, nine members, seven of them, and two alternates. You've got two regular members that uh, are up for reappointment or can be reappointed or uh, others could be appointed in their place. Uh, that would be for a three-year term to end June of 2020. Um, the board uh, has recommended that Jennifer Lisk and Devron Furr uh, be reappointed, but there's other, um, I believe there's some other um, applications for your consideration in the packet. Be happy to answer any questions. I only had one in my packet, one additional. That's, yeah, that's all I had also. Yeah, one additional. But, and that one goes back to October 14. That's correct. You, uh, you've heard the request, yes, Commissioner uh, Lauder. I'd like to make the motion that we appoint Jennifer Lisk and Devron Furr to the Board of Adjustment. Second. We have a first and a second to reappoint Jennifer Lisk and Devron Furr uh, to a new term that will end June 30, 2020. A first and a second. Any other discussion? 
All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. County Manager Lucas, you're up again. Firework display for Oakboro, 4th of July. Yeah, this is your annual 4th of July celebration in Oakboro uh, approval. And so you can see uh, from the information that they're wanting to do it on the 4th of July uh, at 11.30 p.m. Um, and so that's uh, for your consideration. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I move that we approve the fireworks display, uh, allow Oakboro to have their uh, annual fireworks display. We have a motion by Vice Chairman Burleson and a second by uh, Commissioner Morgan. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, <clears throat> discussion of county support of local businesses. And uh, I'm uh, the one to start this out. Over the last couple of months, we have approved as commissioner several contracts for services to companies outside of our county. This is justified when those services are not available within our county. When we pay taxpayer dollars to companies outside of our county, we lose the economic effect for our county. Those dollars are not going to benefit our citizens other than the services that they are provided. When we contract with a company within our county, those dollars are reinvested on the most part back into our community. Those type of investments back into our community multiply those dollars seven to 10 times in our local economy. Those companies also are located within our county that pay taxes here in our county and they employ citizens, which has a huge economic impact for our county. So as a commissioner and a taxpayer, uh, we always need to look to find reasons to do business with local companies and not look for reasons not to do business with local companies. Each time we contract with a company outside of our county, we need to be asking ourselves questions about possible Stanley County companies that could provide the services or the goods that would benefit our local economy. And all I want to do is emphasize the importance of using Stanley County tax dollars and trying to contract services and goods with Stanley County companies, which if we do that, that's good for everybody in Stanley County. And I understand there's sometimes services that are not offered in this county and we have to go outside but I would hope that that would be the only reason that we choose a company outside of Stanley County. That's all I wanted to say, and I would entertain any other comments on this topic at this time. Chairman. Yes, sir, Commissioner. Uh, <clears throat> my father-in-law had a small business in Stanley County for probably 35 years as a two-man operation, and I remember him saying over and over and over, if you can't find it in Stanley County, you don't need it. <laughs> And I've always thought of that when I go outside to buy. Sometimes you have to go outside the county if you want something that's not there. But uh, I think that's a true statement. I also feel like that since I've been a commissioner, um, we've always tried to support our local businesses as best we could, best of our abilities, and uh, tried to approve bids to our local folks. Sometimes when our local people do have the lowest bid, sometimes they don't meet some of the requirements, and in that case, of course, we can't do that. And I think in the past, we've approved local uh, businesses, uh, even if they were the higher bid. Uh, I know of several occasions, I can't recall specifics, but uh, we have done that because circumstances <clears throat> warranted us to stay local. I think most locals uh, are smaller than some of the outsides that uh, bid on some of our projects, uh, and some of these larger companies uh, outside uh, won't bid on some of the smaller things. Uh, but some of the lo smaller locals uh, just don't stand a chance when these others come in. Uh, these larger, our larger locals uh, look for things outside the county because 
uh, they can't give up the manpower or the time and what have you to, to take on some smaller jobs. Uh, I will end with this. I believe that uh, we cannot afford to take a chance on not providing the best possible services to our citizens. So I think, you know, as best as we can, I agree, we need to, to support our local businesses. Uh, but there's always situations, and I, th I think what I'm trying to say is we have to look at every uh, instant uh, situation uh, at that t at the time it's presented. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McIntyre. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I would just like to say I agree with you on uh, on most everything, and also just mention that uh, you know. Personally, I try to be mindful of that, and also as a commissioner, try to be mindful of that. Um, you know, our job too is to make sure we take care of the citizens of Stanley County the best we can. Uh, certain times, uh, we do have to go, you know, outside of our area uh, for certain services, and uh, sometimes that's unfortunate. But uh, we've got to uh, have an equal balance of taking care of our citizens and tax dollars and. Uh, and also trying to support those businesses here at home. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, let's go to the item number eight is the consent agenda. I believe everybody's had time to look at the consent agenda and the materials behind it. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I would make a motion that we can approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. We have a first and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor of the consent agenda as presented, please say aye. aye. Okay. Motion carries. Uh, public comment. We've uh, there's nobody here to speak public comment. We took care of that during the budget uh, open meeting. Um, so it's board comment. And I'm going to look down here to Commissioner Swain. I thought that was a Carolina blue jacket you had on, but I see it's red. So, Commissioner Swain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I'd like to apologize to the board. I was unable to make the RPO meeting. I sent you guys an email. Um, I do apologize for that. I know uh, I do my best to try and make my committee meetings, but um, uh, after I got the email afterwards, uh, not much went on uh, from from the email that I think you all received as well. So um, anyway, I also had an opportunity on last Friday to visit uh, South Stanley High School. Uh, they had, I think they had sent out an invite for a uh, STEM, their, their newly renovated STEM lab. Uh, that was a great opportunity. I, I don't know if any of you, you all may have gotten to go. Uh, it was lasted most of the morning. Uh, it was kind of a drop-in deal, but the lab and the classrooms that, that those students were working in and the, the robotics that they had the opportunity to work with were, were, were very interesting, and I, I think the students were learning a lot, and, um, and it, was, it was just a good opportunity to see that that had been renovated or what that had been renovated into. I think they were in a potentially a, a an older wood shop class that had been uh, renovated. Now they still do have their wood shop, but I think it moved into a, a different room and they uh, renovated this other room into a robotics lab. But uh, the kids were very, very interested in what they were doing and they did a great job explaining it to everybody that was there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Swain. Uh, Commissioner McIntyre. No comment. Thank you. Commissioner Louder. No comment. Uh, Vice Chair Burleson. Yeah, I'd just like to say we had a Water and Sewer Authority meeting uh, earlier, 6 o'clock this evening. I uh, went through the budget for that, uh, did approve the the budget for Water and Sewer Authority, and very short meeting, didn't last about, about 10 minutes. So uh, Commissioner Eifert and I got out there pretty quick. Thank you. Commissioner Eifert. No comment, sir. Commissioner Morgan. I'd just like to say that um, we had a great turnout at the Go Fast event at the airport back on the 2021st, and I know a lot of them guys who were out there asked us if we could do it again. Um, we set a few world records out there that 
I think it really put Stanley County on the map as far as that goes. I've already seen a couple of magazines that already had uh, mentioned in the, where it was set. So I think it's a great thing for our county, and hopefully uh, we can do more things like that. That's it. Thank you. County Manager Lucas. No comment, sir. Thank you. Councilor Furr. No comment, sir. Thank you. Well, I do have a comment for you. Happy birthday tomorrow. Your husband told me you were going to turn almost 40, but not quite. So I do hope you have a great birthday. And you still look like you're in your 20s. Happy birthday. Yeah, I'm backing up. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Miss Clerk Tyler, anything? Okay. When's your birthday? <laughs> I hear you. Uh, I do want to share. I want to share something that that the Board of Commissioners were given this past week. It's in the board bulletin, and I, I think it's pretty interesting information. You know, you, I talk about home building permits a lot, and they are important to our county, but commercial development is equally important. And this was a, an analysis that shows that it's important for a community to have a diverse tax base, which includes residential, commercial, industrial. And just recently, we've gotten 78 acres out in Stanfield. I think we got 40 acres of it approved for industrial development, which is very important for our county and very important for Stanfield the ideal ratio would be you would have 50% residential and 50% industrial. And it states that NC State study that showed for every dollar in residential property taxes paid, the residential home requires $1.35 in services, which means we're going in the hole, so to speak. But on the other hand, for every dollar in property taxes paid by industry or commercial businesses, those businesses only require 30 cent of services. So it shows you how important industry or business properties are to our county and any other county. And in Stanley County, we have 75% of our tax base is residential and we have only 25% commercial or industrial. And I think it should be our goal as a county to move up the percentage based on industrial or commercial values because it would benefit our county. That's something I thought was really interesting in this report that Andy provided to us this past Friday. And I'm our county manager because every Friday he gives us information that is very valuable for us as county leaders. And I thank you for sending these bulletins out. Um, if there's no other business, our meeting will recess until Thursday, June the 8th at 4.30 in the county manager's conference room. And before we dismiss, the next regular meeting will be on Monday, July the 10th at 7 p.m. And I will be away in Florida watching my granddaughter play travel softball in a big tournament. So therefore, I'm gonna ask permission from the board to allow me that time away and I'm going to ask Vice Chairman Burleson to preside over our July 10 meeting. Is that okay with everyone? Yes. Do we, we we'll don't make a motion of that? No. No. Go on. I don't think. We just need consensus. Whether you approve it or not, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And people are, before we dismiss, people are making fun of my tie tonight. This, if you haven't seen it, it's it's $100 bills and $50 bills, and this is my budget tie. In case Andy needs any extra money, he can take some scissors and cut it out of here. So, <laughs> here and no other business. This meeting is recessed.